retro rock plays everything. Hey Rob here and in this video I'm going to show you how to install Open Dingux or Open Dingu as however you pronounce it onto the RS-97, a video game system I reviewed earlier. I'll put a link down below to that earlier review. Uh, as you can see in the background right here, uh, once it's hacked you're going to be able to run things like Quake, which is just kind of crazy considering uh, the original game performance of this thing, uh, and a number of other things. Now, uh, some games do suffer with this a little bit, but most do better under this, and uh, it adds a whole lot of different game systems to emulate. And real quick, I'm gonna go through the menu, and I'm gonna show you a few of the features. But I'm not gonna make it super fast, there's not gonna be a lot of gameplay here. This is probably the only gameplay you're gonna see, uh, because this video is dedicated to installing it. Now, uh, there are two ways to install this software. One is on the external SD card here, or the other one is internally. I'm gonna go through installing it internally because I've seen other videos on installing it externally. Uh, plus my, my external reader isn't working right, so it's had some problems. But you would way rather have this uh, than the original firmware on it. I would say, unless there's a very specific reason uh, you want the original, I would definitely go with this. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna show you the menus real quick. Okay, real quick, let's go through the menu. There is Bard, a comic book reader. Press down to get to the next thing. There's a file manager. Commander's a lot like Midnight Commander, which used to be on the Amiga. If you've ever used that file system um, manager, it's really pretty good. Uh, so I'm glad that that's on here. There's a text editor, a music player, image viewer, and then there is a regular uh, Explorer-style browser. Uh, that's local browser, not like internet browser, obviously. Okay, you use the top triggers to move among the tabs. And here are the emulators that are included. These all come with it. There's uh, not a lot of games or any, I mean, not a lot of uh, ROMs or anything for these, but these are included in the installation. The Amiga 500, it does an okay job. Amstrad, haven't tried that one yet. Atari 2600 emulator works great, and of course it didn't have any of these before. The Atari 800, 5200 emulator, still to play with that one. The 7800 emulator. The Atari Lynx emulator, which is really quite good too. I've played that. Uh, the Atari ST, BBC Micro. I'm looking forward to playing with that one, but I haven't yet. The Commodore 64 emulator, and I think it does VIC-22. Um, again, haven't played with that one, but I want to. ColecoVision emulator, not bad. DOSBox, have not played with that one yet either. Final Burn Alpha, the arcade emulator, uh, really pretty darn good. Uh, I ran quite a few games with it, and I have had no problems yet. There's the A320 version, and uh, that also have had zero problems with. Game Boy. Another Game Boy one. See, that's nice too. They include more than one just in case the Game Boy uh, emulator doesn't work. You can try a different one. Game Boy Advance, mm, okay. More Game Boy Advance, yeah, okay. And television emulator. Um, I believe this is for, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is running for some of those old mobile uh, Java games, but uh, I have not tried it yet. There is MAME on here. Don't expect it to do anything amazing, but it is on here. Again, I'm not demoing this. I'm just showing you what's available. Uh, Sega Master System. Have tried that. Not bad. Mega Drive. Uh, better than the original one, in my opinion. But I haven't played it a whole lot, so I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Open MSX. MSX. Uh, these were a Japanese, um, Japanese computer. Nice to have. Neo Geo works as well as the other one, if not a little bit better. Neo Geo Pocket. NES works quite a bit better, in my opinion, than the original, too. I have, I don't even know what an ONS emulator is. Open Bore. Uh, this is like a fighter uh, platform. Beats of Rage. Uh, and they make a lot, of, a lot of little plug-in modules and games you can play. There's a dedicated community to it. I haven't tried it yet on this platform yet. Uh, PC-98. Again, this is just discussing how to install it and what you get, not really an in-depth, and I will do it in-depth later. PC Engine. Really good. I'm very happy that it has this now. 
Uh, I've been playing a number of PC Engine games on it, which is Turbo Graphics to us in the US. PlayStation, don't expect too much out of it. I do hear there's like four games that run really well on it, which is interesting. I want to test that a little bit more, and we'll probably do a video dedicated to that. The Scum VM. Darn it, if you do not have Scum, these are all the old LucasArts games, uh, adventure games that were point and click. So it's nice to have that. Super NES emulator, it worked okay for me. Um, I have not played a whole lot on it. It seemed pretty good, but again, not a lot of experience. I did try the Wonderswan emulator. It was amazing. The Spectrum emulator, and that is it. Okay, next we're going to go on to what I've been kind of toying with a lot. Again, haven't played a lot of these, but the ones I've played uh, were pretty fun. Uh, Apricots have not played. Arkanoid, of course, is the best dang game ever. No, it's not really, but it's really good. Uh, ASCII Portal. I've played this. That's pretty fun. It's it's a portal with ASCII characters, and it's uh, it's like a side-scrolling instead of 3D. Uh, Bermuda haven't played. Blockout 2 haven't played. Boulder Dash, if it's anything like the original, it's good, but I haven't played it. Uh, Cave Story. Oh, yeah. This runs Cave Story really well, and I've heard problems with Cave Story on... Uh, uh, the Dingu platform, which is kind of interesting, or Dingux platform. Um, really happy to see it there. This is one of the games I've played quite a bit of, and I'm really happy that it's on here. I mean, this really made the device for me. Uh, sea Dogs, I played a little bit of it. It seemed kind of laggy to me. Um, not real happy about that. Uh, I haven't played the Chocolate Doom and Chocolate Heretic versions on here yet. Uh, but I hear they're pretty good. They're basically a back-to-bones version of these. You know, it doesn't add any new lighting or use high-res textures or anything. It's just how you remember the games. So uh, just know that these are kind of the original versions. Don't worry, there's uh, there's some upgraded versions too uh, later on. Again, a bunch of these I haven't played. I did uh, play Drillix. I, I thought it was a little weird because it uses the X button to drill, and I haven't been able to check whether... Uh, you can set that or not, but it was kind of annoying, but it's still a good game. Uh, I think I only got one life, too. Uh, E-Duke. I have been playing Duke Nukem on this. It does play pretty well. Um, you know, <laughs> it's it's a lot like I remember playing it uh, back on the Pentium because the controls weren't quite there for it yet. Uh, it does play fine, though. It isn't like a big frame dropper or anything. It's just the limits of having a D-pad and playing the game. So if you're comfortable with the D-pad, you can definitely play E-Duke. Uh, I've got the whole game on here. I've put the full game on it because I do have a copy of it. Copied the files and boom, it runs the full version. I like that a lot. Uh, Free Droid I've played in the past. It's actually pretty good. I haven't played it on here yet. Uh, Hexen, see, so you can. there's another upgraded version of Hexen. Uh, what else did I play on here? Uh, Open Tyrion I played. It's a really good shooter. I enjoyed this. I, I forgot how good it was. I played it way back. Uh, when it was just Tyrion, I think on the 486, and I liked the game then, and I like it now. I haven't tried any of these. I hear they run pretty well. Uh, I thought I tried Noise 2SA, and it crashed. Just a note, though, I didn't test it a whole lot. Uh, PR Boom is the version of Doom I've been using. It runs it great. It is just amazing, uh, and everything should run Doom, in my opinion. Doom on everything. Um, and I did put the full version of Doom on here as well, and it ran just fine. So really happy about that. Uh, ditto for Quake. I put the full version of Quake on here. It runs exactly how you remember it. It is a nice version of Quake, and I have a good time playing it. If you noticed in the background, there's a texture too that might be a little bit off, but otherwise it runs it really smoothly. And um, I play it with the D-pad, and it's really not bad. Really, it's it's pretty good. The controls work pretty well. Again, I'll probably do a dedicated video on this one and this and this guy over here, uh, PR Boom. Keep going, Rise of the Triad seems to work really well. One of these I had a terrible time with, but as you can see, like there is a lot of games. Oh, Super Tux ran like crap on here, but uh, I doubt you're getting it for uh, Super Tux. Have not tried Wolf 3D. I haven't tried the Zelda yet. This Zelda remake thing. Uh, so I want to check that. All right, finally, I don't know why they have the unmount test when they already have the unmount <laughs> unmount feature. I've only used the unmount feature, and since my external SD is now not working cor uh, correctly, I don't use it. Uh, there is a good list of settings in here. You can set the TV out. That's super important. This is where 
uh, the screen timeout and the backlight and all this other stuff is set and why mine goes so fast. You can set these longer if you want. This is set by seconds. All right, back. You can configure the skin. You can uh, change the look and appearance of the backdrop wallpaper. Obviously, that's the backdrop too. Um, a little bit of about, and you can turn the power off here. This is generally where you want to turn off the power. All right. Whew. That is it. That's just a quick run through. Uh, now let's get to actually installing it. Before you start this project, you might want to have your tools ready. First thing you're going to need is a small Phillips head screwdriver. That's to unscrew the screws in the back of your unit. A spudger. This will help you pry the unit open without damaging it. Micro SD card. Yes, it does come with one. However, bring your own so you can have the original in case this project doesn't work. I recommend 16 gigs or higher. This is just an example here. Also, some kind of adapter to get it into your computer. If you happen to have a micro SD card reader, fine. If not, you might want to use one of these options. Okay, first step, we need to take this thing apart and get to the internal SD card. So we're going to pop out the cartridge and take out the battery. Battery has one screw attaching it. The reason we need to pull out the battery is behind this battery is another screw we need access to. Another thing you will need to note before starting, if you take off your battery cover and look right Behind the battery cover, there is a marking, and it says Retro Game version 1 point something or version 2. Note which version you have. Know if you have a version 1 or a version 2. This will determine what version of your new operating system you're going to need. Okay, congratulations. There is only five more screws to remove. Let's remove those last five. You can see them uh, in the four corners. And then there is one where the cartridge goes in as well. Once all four screws are removed, you're going to want to take the case apart. I recommend you use a spudger, but your fingers might work. Once the back cover is off, you can pull out the internal SD card right there. Uh, note that that little sticky on top of it can be removed with it. Uh, you can take that off and stick it back on when you're done. Once you have that card out, it's time to grab your new SD card and throw it into your PC. Before we get started, we're going to need to install a couple of pieces of software, so let's download them. www.partitionwizard.com has Mini Tool Partition Wizard, which we're going to need to resize the SD card. Well, the partition's on the SD card, because you're going to have more room now. Next, we need Etcher at etcher.io. What Etcher does is it burns OS images onto your SD card. You need that, of course, because we are going to download a new OS to put on there. Next, we need to get WinRAR, and that's available at www.rarlab.com. Uh, we need this because the Dingux operating system comes as a RAR file, which is not the same as a zip file. And unfortunately, your OS cannot generally unRAR things without the help of the software. It also is free, but it is a trial. Next, we go to jutleys.wixsite.com, which you can thank for making this tremendous mod. Not me, these guys. They did all the work. Okay, you're going to want to go to the RS-97 mirror, and first thing is you want to pick the correct internal version. If you have a version 1, you want a version 1. 2, version 2. I told you how to look for that earlier. It's on the back of your system by the battery compartment. All right, now let's download that firmware. And of course, you might have a different version here available. Next, I will install the software that I loaded, and I will extract 97 Next firmware 
to its own folder. I'm doing this in fast forward right now because I assume you know how to do it, but if you don't, feel free to freeze any of the frames and you can get an idea of how to do it yourself. Okay, if you've not inserted your new, fresh, shiny SD card into your computer, you should do it at this time. It should show up as an extra drive. Next thing you're going to do is we are going to go locate Etcher. And there it is. Next, hit select image and go find that image that you unrard in the last step. There it is right there. It's a .ds, .dsk file. Next, make sure it is flashing the right device. That should be your new SD card right there and hit flash. It'll take a few minutes, but then it will finish. One last note. When this process is done, you're going to get the message, you need to format the disk in drive F before you can use it, or drive whatever. Do not format. Hit cancel. Okay, let's partition this thing, shall we? First thing you're going to want to do is locate the mini tool partition wizard. Click on that guy to get it started. Now click on mini tool partition wizard free. And it should start. It'll probably be the last disk in your list and you see how there is a ROMs section. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to extend the partition and crank it all the way up and hit OK. What that will do is adopt the rest of the room that you have on your card for ROM storage. Hit apply, yes. And it will take a while just so you know. That's it. You're pretty much done. Once this completes, you can take out that card and install it into the RS-97 system. Putting everything back is pretty much just the reverse of how you put everything in there in the first place. Put the ST card back in. Uh, make sure you put it in there good and tight, by the way. I put mine in a little bit loose and had some problems. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that it's in there really good, unlike what I did originally. Finally, just put the uh, other five screws back in and reinsert the battery, put the cover on, and power it up to test it. Okay, so now power it up and do a test and make sure it loads into your new operating system. Good sign. And there we go. Now you're playing with power. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is how to get some ROMs on here, which of course is the goal of this whole thing. Plug one end of your USB charger into your computer and the other end, of course, into the RS-97. Thusly, notice how the power light comes on. Now I'm going to turn it on, and in a moment I will press A. Come on. Anytime now. There we go. Select USB mode. I want USB drive. A. Now we'll connect a USB drive that says ROMs. On mine it's F, yours might be D, E, G, who knows. But it will say ROMs on it. You'll drop your ROMs into the ROMs folder or whatever. Uh, it really just depends on the program itself. And I'll go over more of that in the upcoming videos covering individual uh, programs and emulators. And that is it for this RS-97 video. Uh, there will be some coming up in the next couple weeks about some of the emulators and some of the games that you can run on this. If this video helped you out, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I'll see you in a couple days. Bye. Retro Rob's Gaming Videos